So I love work from home purely because for around, I think, eight years of my life, I've been an independent consultant, juggling many clients. I've run my own business. So I'm very used to structuring my day so that it's really structured well. I So I, I also think you can be far more productive sitting at home because you can balance out what needs to be done at home and you can do your work and you don't feel like, oh, I have to rush back to get something done at home. But I think that's also by virtue of me having done this for so long before I had joined Hired. So in between my work with agencies as in Genesis and IPAN and all where we worked in office and then running a restaurant and being an independent consultant and then again going back to an office i so i'm able i've been able to adjust really well and i think what we did very well is that every morning we used to have a leadership and we still have a leadership team meeting on zoom so you actually end up i keep telling everyone i end up talking to more people than i was talking to when i was going into office because we were all doing our own work then, but every morning we do this meeting now and it's been happening for hundred days. I think some of us might be a little fed up of seeing each other's faces now, but we do it. But that also brings in a little structure, right? And it makes you feel like the team is together uh, rallying through what is happening because it is a very difficult situation. And uh, so I think mine is more, my ease is more because I've done it before. So I found it very easy to structure it again like that. And ours, so I work with the Zurich office and the Chicago office. So ours are anyway a little stretched, but I do agree that when you're at home and also because it's a crisis period right now, there's like, you know, it's not, like at nine o'clock it's not that 9 p.m work finishes it just carries on and on and on so that can be a little testing but again i'm saying i think it's because of my past way of working yeah. from home that i'm used to structuring things myself so that's what well, thankfully it's a learning from before which has helped but otherwise i don't i think work has been work has been difficult because you are just it's so I've navigated an epidemic crisis before for two other very large clients, but it's just that you want to, you feel bad about the situation that is happening in the industry. You don't see when that is going to get better because we really don't know what is happening with this virus. So I wouldn't say it keeps me up at night, but it's definitely a worry and not just for our industry for sure, because we are so directly impacted by this. And it will have a domino effect across companies, across the industry. And it, that does play on your mind a little bit. Also, because you don't see the government stepping in quickly enough. You don't know what the next mm -hmm. step is going to be. But uh, otherwise, I think it would be more the insomnia than anything else but there is a constant worry of course that you just want things to get back to yeah, yeah. so at least a semblance of normalcy because you know the economy is going to tank it's that's it's just the way it is and it's going to take a while for things to stabilize so i would say i can't really pinpoint any specific brand who's done a smack up good job about this because i think everyone's also been reacting as things have been happening because we didn't, no one realized when lockdown would kick in, what lockdown will allow, what is going to happen after that. But I think the brands which have handled it best are people, and I think that's something which Hyatt does a lot of, and that's just the way I've always worked. So that was my advice also, and we've done this globally as well, that you talk when there's something to talk about. Do not have knee-jerk reactions. Be as transparent as you possibly can be. And it is a tough situation right now. So there is going to be some negative press and especially because of the industry we are in and the fact that we have brick and mortar hotels that people come into. This is a communicable disease. There are going to be cases. How do you handle that? And you, I think as long as you handle things with empathy and your guests and your colleagues see that there are systems in place and everyone internally and when we are communicating externally <laughs> are being open and honest and transparent and not like trying to fudge facts over here you will be able to control your messaging 
you will there will always be some criticism and that is something even when there is criticism unless it is incorrect information you should be able to deal with it through a conversation and dialogue so i think what is important is that as long as you have been honest transparent and you have been wise about not don't talk unless there is something to talk about in this situation i really think that is advisable i just wanted to say that so i've handled two crises before which were epidemics which was the avian flu crisis for a pharma company and for a chicken production company which i can talk about which is kfc but the other one is confidential one yeah. so uh one was making the vaccine for avian flu the other was directly affected in the sense that their produce was affected right what they are selling and what i learned at that time from the uh, from kfc is that you have to which is what i was saying that you have to be transparent in your communication but more than that you need to educate the customer so the fact that you know that when you cook chicken at a certain temperature or anything indian honestly are cooking at such at such a high temperature that you kill any virus that is there but people don't understand that till you educate them so to educate in a clear manner and to also be start preparing yourself for different situations that can arise i think 2 months down the line it's almost 3 months now right down the line but within one and a half months we have mapped out various situations that could affect the hospitality industry who we need to communicate with what we need to communicate to them and we had those factors in place which could then be customized to because things were still changing you couldn't possibly predict every situation so i think that kind of crisis management where you at least it's more crisis preparedness than management because the managing happened as the situation evolved but i do feel we are on much firmer footing right now so there's less of oh my god we have to draw up a statement now this is a new situation we have pretty much tried and mapped out what could happen but when you what i felt that this epidemic has mad this pandemic has managed to do is that sanitation levels across five star hotels are very high i think that is something which guests the reason they take that for granted when they come to any five star hotel right but the fact that we hired put what you said the global care and cleanliness commitment we have a hygiene and well being leader basically a trained person at every hotel who is supposed to oversee what is all the cleanliness measures that we are taking and that that was put into place that within a month of this pandemic happening we started home deliveries across our hotels which were open and uh, had regency delhi open its own they have their own website for deliveries three of our hotels do their deliveries themselves we don't outsource deliveries to zomato and swiggy and so on because those hotels have the infrastructure to send out uh, cars with your food and so on but i think that whole that innovation that sandy kicked in which is really good that this pushed everyone to now think beyond what we are usually used to in the hotel space that you will have a oh these vacations will happen then you will have uh, journalists will come and experience this you manage to start thinking out of the box of course it would be nicer to have had to think out of the box without a pandemic breathing down your neck that is the sad part but uh, i think we've all innovated and it's quite interesting to see also there's a lot of positive messaging going on which is very nice there is no unlike in other industries where i've seen one company pulling down another company to show themselves as better none of that has happened in the hospitality industry people have bandied together in that sense across the different chains so i think the learnings are in that and also the fact that you've just innovated and cleanliness standards are at an all time high which is a good thing yeah. because this is a new world now that where we are going to be so and working with doctors so you don't want people to think they are walking into a hospital but it's at least luxury which is very very safe for as safe as we can possibly make it for guests okay so i think one is that you need to instill one thing start normalizing a little bit they haven't yet start instilling confidence in the guest that 
we are a safe place to come to and it is a safe haven but always be communicating that you are walking you are never going to be finding us lacking in luxury because that is what people come to hotels for you're not coming for just health and hygiene and everyone's in ppe outfits right that this is you will get the same luxury but it will be at an elevated level of sanitation and hygiene the best of efforts are being made so i think that communication will need to start going out more and more the fact that hotels are going to be able to customize the experience to you so what like speaking of hyatt i just want to say like that we have reimagined experiences now your dining experience is going to no longer just be in a restaurant if you want a private dining in a suite we are doing that at our hotels if you want the buffet which everyone is very wary of right now right that you go to the buffet people pick up dinner rolls put them back everyone's touching those spoons so at hard place manjara hills they are serving the buffet in individual portions to people now these were things you saw in stand alone very high end restaurants usually that you had a sit down buffet uh, at your table then the fact that weddings can be intimate because now we have an upper limit of 50 people right at weddings which is unheard of in india i don't think people in delhi don't throw parties with less than 75 people uh, so that you are able to say that we are still going to give you that same experience you're not going to be lacking in anything so the ability for a hotel to customize and innovate and reimagine the experience that they give a guest that needs to be communicated because there has to be a reason why people will come back to you and uh, you know this work thing that you can come to our hotels and work we will give you a safe place to work which is outside of home like khushnuma was saying and i don't have children so it's very easy for me to work at home but i have dogs which you can hear i think but uh, you know that you have a safe luxurious place to work it's it's something which people offices individuals are looking for and across our hotels at least we have different you know again it's that innovation that we will keep innovating to try and give the guest what they need and i think the other thing that is always a way of building trust is to let people know that our own colleagues are working in these hotels they would not be working there if it wasn't safe so the amount of care we are taking our general managers live in the hotels so with their families so the fact that that is happening that needs to be communicated these are things we we take for granted in the hospitality one knows but people don't know these things right that if it's safe for us to work there it is safe for you to come in and let us look after you so that communication needs to go out and i think that is where things will change things we took for granted that oh people know this about hotels no they don't know these things about hotels and we need to communicate that hyatt is known for its f&b offerings and one thing that we've seen when this pandemic struck and within a month we started home deliveries across our hotels certain hotels as i said were used delivery partner certain hotels used their own uh, mechanism because they were able to do that what and i remember asking some of the hotels because i run a restaurant right so i asked how many deliveries are you orders are you getting because i i really wondered at this and it is amazing the loyalty that guests have to your hotel and to a restaurant that the numbers are fabulous of course the numbers are not enough that you can not have guests staying in your hotel and just run on deliveries but still the numbers are fabulous and people are willing to so obviously the rates are not the prices are not the same as sitting in a five star in your hotel and eating the food but uh, menus have been reworked they've been customized guests also want to because we have time like you were saying what are you doing at home now people have time to cook so we have these packages where you can cook at home so it's a full kit put together by the chef all the ingredients and then you do a video call with the chef so it's personalized to that extent 
and he takes you through the entire process. There's a bread making kit which Hyatt Regency Delhi sends. There's Andaz has its own uh, curated menu, but it works when people are wondering, are people ordering? I think the loyalty of guests is so much that they are still ordering. They want to have that food. And I think that second thing that they know that the hotel will take excessive care to make sure that this is safe, clean, hygiene, the packaging, at least you know that much that, okay, this is going to be very hygienic food that I'm getting from a hotel. There's no two things about it. So people do gravitate towards hotels for fine dining orders, as is being said. And a lot of people are ordering breads. I find it amazing. You know, this thing of ordering breads and ordering bread making kits also, because everyone wants to make sourdough suddenly. But, <laughs> but it is that safety and comfort that a hotel provides you, that people are veering more towards hotels than to standalone restaurants, because they know that a certain standard of hygiene is definitely being maintained over there. I think within two months of the pandemic, we had uh, we have the higher cleanliness commitment that we have, but uh, along with that, while we are working with various medical experts and so on, we have a hygiene and well-being leader, which is a trained manager at each property. But this is something that is going to carry on till whether there's a vaccine or not. So this, which is what I'm saying, I think that I think the pandemic has made us innovate and rethink the way we are going to be serving our guests. Things that which might have happened six months down the line have already been implemented now and will be the new norm. This is the way you will go forward. Of course, what this uh, gentleman who's written in has said that this elevated cleanliness, the cleanliness was always there at five star hotels. It's now more medically approved, maybe, and it has to follow protocols set down by WHO in regard to this pandemic. But otherwise, the cleanliness levels were always very high. We took it for granted that people knew this, and I think this is where the communication angle comes in, that you need to now start communicating that this is a very clean but luxurious place to come and stay. So that is, I think it's here to stay. I cannot believe any five-star hotel chain is going to six months down the line because there's a vaccine say, and now we are not going to be doing that. I earlier that you need to, people will come to you because it's, you're getting a safe but luxurious place. So that is why people will come to you. And I think that you definitely should not underplay the safety angle right now. Everyone needs to feel safe and you need to be safe and not be silly about these things and say, oh my God, don't talk so much about safety. Of course you need to know that a place is safe, but places like Hyatt, Accor, any of these hotel chains provide you a certain luxury, which is what you want to go there for. And that is going to stay. Also, one thing I wanted to point out, something as small as the cancellation policies, right, at hotels, that customers know that, guests know that no one is trying to please them. Cancellation policies have been extended till end July, and every month that we are seeing this carrying on, it is being extended. It is at a cost to the hotel, but no one is trying to scrimp on making the customer not feel pleased at a time when everyone's like no one wants to lose money right as a guest so i think people what deepa said that hospitality chains are walking the talk so there's no question of being opportunistic over here because you know exactly and in this world of social media you cannot be saying something and doing something else. It will be, you will be called out on it, it so quickly that you will be very sorry if you did it. And I think there'll be very few brands in any industry who will be trying to do that, honestly.